whether you want to or not. At the end of the day, the only person responsible for your safety is you. Security guard armed with a semi-automatic weapon. It's happening at a North Philly gas station. The owner coming up with the idea to scare off criminals. If you saw this, this is our go vote for tonight. Would you feel safer or uncomfortable? So right now the vote is 65% of you saying safer, 35% uncomfortable. You know, personally, I think they're asking the wrong question. I think the question they should be asking is, do you think this makes you safer? or makes you unsafe. I think in this country, we are too obsessed with this idea or notion of feeling safe. It's this idea of feeling safe that all of these anti-gun politicians and, and gun control lobby nonsense, is, that's how they get you to vote for gun control because they sell you on this idea that we'll make you feel safe because we'll pass all of these laws and do all these things that are supposed to stop criminals from doing something that honestly doesn't stop them from doing it. So are you safe? versus do you feel safe to me are very important distinctions here. You spoke with the gas station owner who says this is needed to keep both his workers and customers safe. Yeah, interesting listening to those numbers uh, you just gave us, Sheba. So the store manager says that he had to do something more than call 911. And most customers, I'll tell you that I talked to this evening on and off camera say that they support this, but there were a few who say they don't believe this is the right approach. Right now, crime in Philadelphia is through the roof. It is absolutely insane. You can go on YouTube YouTube right now and just just type in there search it hell even Temple University one of the biggest universities there they are dealing with crime issues in Philadelphia and largely because people refuse to deal with an underlying issue everybody keeps thinking that you can solve problems by passing laws you can't if you don't deal with the underlying issues you're gonna have to deal with the consequences of not dealing with that issue one way or another and that's what you're seeing here now it has to get to the point where actual gas station owner has to hire people with guns to protect his store. So me personally, I've never been a fan of gas stations. I don't like gas stations. I feel super vulnerable at gas stations, which is why I always carry when I'm at a gas station. So it only makes sense when you're living in a place like Philadelphia where the crime is through the roof right now that you'd have to take measures to this extreme to do that. And I think anybody who does have a problem with this, I don't think they necessarily think it's unsafe. I think what it is is them being forced to confront the fact visually that they aren't safe. And that's what the gun shows them. And their minds are like, oh my gosh, there's, there's, there's armed guards with guns here? Is it unsafe here? People like to live in this mental facade and this idea that anywhere that they go is safe because they don't see any direct evidence of it being unsafe. But trust me, you may not think you're being watched, but trust me, someone is watching you. Hired security strapped with AR-15s or shotguns, standing guard and walking the property of this North Philly gas station and convenience store. So first things first, there were no AR-15s in that video, <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. I personally like this. I like the idea of a store owner taking it into his own hands to protect what he has put his life's work into, his blood, sweat, and tears into, to protect it against people who think it's okay to just come and take things from people because they see fit. Um, I don't have a problem. Me personally, if I rode to a gas station and I saw security guards with AR-15s or shotguns or whatever, whatever have you, I personally would have no problem with it. It's no different to me than having a police officer show up after you call 911. I'm personally going to still have a gun on myself either way, but doesn't bother me. I honestly don't see why it would bother someone else unless, unless you don't have a gun yourself. And so in your mind, you think any presence of a firearm is exceedingly dangerous this is supposed to be a city right and you got the kids walking around guns like this would be on the battlefield this man is entirely too old to not understand the difference between the way things should be and the way they are that is a mentality that i've noticed runs very consistent with respect to people who kind of live in left-leaning cities the way that philadelphia is philadelphia by and large is a left-leaning city they are always voting blue the rest of Pennsylvania, on the other hand, is more red. But Philadelphia, oh, they kind of lean towards the ooh, gun ziki aspect of the Second Amendment and politics. That being said, um, I never really understood making a distinction between the battlefield and the city. But first of all, the cities in and of themselves, when you have a bunch of people in one area, it's always going to be more dangerous versus being in a place where it's more spread out. For instance, 
in Philadelphia, you need a license to open carry. In most other parts of Pennsylvania, you don't need a license to open carry. And the reasoning is that because it's a large metropolitan area where people are tightly living together in a, in a large space, that somehow it makes it more dangerous to be able to have more firearms there. I think the opposite. I think that people in the cities should have more firearms than the people out in the rural areas because you are more inclined and more likely to have to use that gun to defend yourself than you would be if you lived in rural America. I just never, I think it's a backwards mentality to have. I don't care whether or not someone, I don't make a distinction between whether or not someone's shooting on me when I'm at war versus in my house versus when I'm at the gas station versus when I'm at the store. It doesn't matter to me. This idea is the notion that those guns should be on the battlefield. A shootout is a shootout is a shootout. Whether it's happening in a store, at a gas station, or in your house, the requirements are the same. I need a firearm to defend myself, and I want the best firearm to do that. Corey Berry says she's on board with it. If you're trying to get gas, you live in a bad area, and the only place is here, and they're getting robbed all the time, I mean, I support the owner. Exactly. Like I keep saying, the only person responsible for your safety is you. Clearly, calling 911 or calling the cops hasn't done the job that it needs to do in order to stop this. So you have to take things into your own hands. And the reason why it doesn't work is because the cops can never get there fast enough. The criminals know this. They take advantage of this, which is why you need to have a gun right there in the moment to defend yourself, because that's the only way you're going to be able to do that fast enough. A cop that's a minute away means nothing if you need seconds. How many times do we have to say this? But clearly she understands that. Neil Patel is the manager of this Carco shop franchise at Broad and Clearfield. We are tired from this all nonsense. Robbery, drug trafficking, racketings, all kind of hanging around your all gangs. He shared with me these videos of what has led up to this drastic response to crime at his business. Over the past few weeks, he says his store was trashed by young people, an ATM stolen out of the store, and he says his car was vandalized while parked at the store. They're forcing us to hire the security, high level security, state level. I am fearful for my safety of my employee as well as my nice neighborhood. Look, at a certain point, people are just going to get tired. They're going to get tired of being victimized. They're going to be tired of having to wait on police officers to get there, not in time enough to stop the crimes that's going on. And what's going to happen is you're going to get more people start to take up their 2A rights. So in a weird way, this idea and this notion of being anti-2A will actually make more people 2A because inevitably reality will take shape. It's going to happen. Whether you want them there or not, the guns are going to be there. The criminal world has their own gun culture. It's going to exist, whether it's going to be on a legal level or illegal level. And at a certain point, people are going to want to do something about it. And that's what you're seeing happening here. Fortunately, this guy has the means and the ability to hire a private security firm to come and defend his gas station. But everybody doesn't have that ability. Not many business owners have that ability. So if you are an individual, there's no reason why you should not have a firearm. There's no reason why you shouldn't carry a firearm, learn to use it safely and competently because you are responsible for yourself. I'm going to keep repeating that until people understand it. You cannot rely on the government to do your job. You heard him. You heard him. He's like, they forced me to hire these guys because they weren't doing it, whether it's because they couldn't do it or whether they choose not to do it. Either way, they weren't doing it. So he had to do it himself. And that's what's going to happen. And truth be told, you're going to continue to see flights out of these left-leaning cities like Philadelphia, LA, New York, all that stuff, because you won't be able to run a business there because the crime is going to be so insane. No one's going to want to invest in those places. It's only a matter of time. Give it 10, 15 years. You're going to see it. People are going to start leaving. They're already leaving, but people are going to stop investing in these places. People are going to stop building build businesses in these places because they're not in a position to protect them because crime is so rampant. All customers. So three weeks ago, he hired the Pennsylvania site state agents. We were Kevlar. We are trained, my guys go to training every other week. They're proficient with this. They're proficient with their taser. They know the laws. Andre Boyer is the chief of the company. As a Pennsylvania state agent, that's what it says. The law tells us that we have a right to protect this property in me, any means necessary. As I said before, I don't have a problem with it. He's lucky and fortunate enough to be able to afford to hire private security. Everybody ain't able, but everybody is able, well, 
by and large, to be able to go out and purchase a firearm themselves to learn gun safety, learn how to use it proficiently and protect themselves. I don't have any issues with this whatsoever. This man told employees he's against it. I asked Patel about it. They feel like using guns, you know, when we have such a big problem with guns in the city is is not the right message. And that's not a right I understand that, but according to the some people, violent people, they carry the gun. Then they're not afraid then. And this is the protection for neighborhood and the customers. There goes that naivete all over again. This idea that taking away legal people's guns is somehow going to stop criminals from using guns is asinine. The criminals don't care. They don't care about your morality. They don't care about your moral code. They don't care about your gun laws. They don't care about the cops. The only thing they respect is equal or more than force. That's it. They look for victims. They look for people who can't defend themselves. So this idea, this weird kind of like, oh, I don't want guns myself because I don't want to be perpetuating the gun use that's already on the streets by criminals is insane to me. You not having a gun isn't going to magically make all the other guns disappear. All it's going to do is create a lopsided effect where you are more of a victim and an easier target to the people who aren't giving up their guns. You can be mad at it. You may not like it. You can scream and shout from the mountaintops. You can pass all the gun control laws you want. It isn't going to stop the people that you're worried about from getting guns and using them against you. So if you understand that, you also should understand that you need to meet them with equal or more force to stop them from making you a victim. And truth be told, most of these criminals don't even want to have to deal with that. As you can currently see here, I guarantee you he's not dealing with the same issues as he was dealing with before because they want it easy. They don't want to fight. They want it easy. And when you as a citizen are armed or in this case, somebody goes out and hires their own guns, you're not easy. So therefore, they're like, I'm going to go somewhere else where it's easy. So you heard him. He just said that uh, people who are against this are concerned about the armed security, but they should be concerned about the bad guys who are out there carrying the guns. Meanwhile, Patel says that he's had a store there for about 20 years. He said the crime has gotten increasingly worse just over the past few years. Um, and he tells me that in the past three weeks, he hasn't had any issues with the crime since bringing this company mm. on. And the people you talk to, Sean, I have this out on Twitter, and a lot of the comments are exactly what you got in response. Mm -hmm. This is where we are in the city. This is unfortunately uh, what we need to do to keep our stores and our, our customers safe if we own a, yeah. a gas station. And especially since you see everything that happened with this particular business owner. Mm -hmm. Seanette, I just want to mention, too, just going back to our Go Vote, when we came on the air, I think it was around 65% who said that uh -huh. it makes them feel safer. Now it's at 80%. Just during your report, it jumped up that high. Wow. See, I told you, he hasn't had any issues since he took his own safety into his own hands. I'm not going to sit up here and tell you that it's fun. It's not something that's enjoyable to have to do, but it is the reality. And the reality is the city of Philadelphia doesn't want to deal with the underlying reason why this is happening. The bottom in Philadelphia fell out during the pandemic. There were a ton of people who were already close to the poverty line or over it. And then after the pandemic, it got even worse. So now you have people out there who are like, I have no other ways or means to make money easy or fast like I may have had before. So now I'm going to do what I know what to do best. I'm going to pick up a gun or pick up a weapon and I'm going to go rob people for it. I'm going to take it from people. That's what happens when you don't address underlying issues. They eventually make their way to the surface. You have to deal with it anyway. But as the saying goes, as you can see here, again, the idea of feeling safe versus being safe are two totally different things. Now, I'm glad at the fact that these people came out and 80 percent said, yeah, it does make them feel much safer. But at the end of the day, it's about actually being safe. Sometimes actually being safe doesn't seem like it makes you feel safe, i.e. walking into a gas station when you see security guards with guns. But at the end of the day, you are more safer than you are without, especially if you're walking into a gas station that's already dealing with this type of criminality. You were just walking in as a victim. Now, now you are walking to this gas station or walking into this gas station as a hardened victim, potential victim, because now you're not an easy target anymore. As I said before, you're no longer an easy target for criminals and criminals don't want to die either. So they go elsewhere to find other victims to take advantage of. But at the end of the day, as I say over and over again, you are responsible for your safety. 
Whether you want to be responsible for it or not, you are responsible for it. You're going to be responsible for it. And there's nothing else you can do about it except for accepting it. Just accept it. Take it upon yourself to buy a firearm. Take it upon yourself to learn how to use it proficiently. Take it upon yourself to learn how to use the gun safely. Then it puts you in a much better position. Because as I've said before, kid, what do you have to lose with that regard? You could still call the cops if you want, even while carrying a gun. If you don't want to go to your gun, you can call the cops. But if you don't have the ability to call the cops for them to get there in time, you now have a gun to protect yourself. And so... I applaud this man for going out of his way to make sure that he protects his customers, protect his business and protect himself and protect his employees. And I think more people should start to do this because it is the only thing that criminals are going to respect. That's it. The Second Amendment is the only thing they respect. They don't respect cops. They don't respect your morality. They don't respect your ideology or your, your partisanship, whether you're left, right, blue, green, yellow. They don't care. All they care is about easy victims. So as long as you stop making yourself an easy victim, then you'll actually be safe instead of feeling safe while getting robbed. Oh, make sure you uh, head over to shop.mysticallyonthewar.com and pick up your I Am The Militia shirt because you are the militia. Because when they said the militia in the Second Amendment, they were talking about the people. And you are the people, so you are the militia, whether it's to protect this country or to protect your family, to protect yourself. At the end of the day, that responsibility comes and falls upon you. So head over to shop.mrcolonnoir and I'll pick up your I'm the Militia shirt. You got the PPU Life hats as well. We had this in a hat design. Also, as you can see right here, got the PPU, no, the I'm the Militia hat. Um, and then don't forget to uh, like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And make sure you click the all button and make sure you sign up for my email and text list so that you can be up to date with all the information that I put out through those channels as well as all of the uh, specials, discounts, giveaways, you name it. So make sure you do all of those things and uh, enjoy the PP life.